Hey guys, it's Mike. Uh, welcome back to Off the Wall. And today it's Friday, which means we are talking about the Orville New Horizons episode two of the third season uh, slash soft reboot of the show. And we are we are breaking it all down right here on Off the Wall. Episode two continues this new trend with the Orville where we're seeing things taking a far more dramatic more uh, uh pro star trek direction for the show uh there's a little bit more levity moments of levity in this episode but still very much a dramatic series now uh seth mcfarlane having taken the show to kind of what i believe to be the full envisioning the full representation of what he always intended the show to be which is this love letter to star trek in fact this episode is such a love letter to star trek in a lot of different ways we're going to kind of break a lot of that down we're seeing that the crew of the orville is picking up an admiral who's going to help with negotiations with the krill who have now become kind of the um uh, reluctant allies of of the union they are uh, they joined together to help combat the Kalon, and now they are uh, in the early stages of kind of feeling each other out as allies. We've seen similar things to this with uh, the Federation and the Klingons in uh, in Star Trek. And now the Krill are uh, granting passage for Union ships, one Union ship, the Orville, uh, to follow a certain path of coordinates, a, a map, if you will, through Krill space to explore regions of the galaxy uh, that the Union has not yet uh, been able to explore. And it comes with warnings, warnings of, of demons in this region of space. As you know, the Krill are a very religious and faith-based civilization. What a lot of what they see and believe and understand is through that, through that lens of their faith. And uh, they're kind of warning, like, like, listen, like, highly recommend you do not go into this chunk of space you know demons are in there they possess people they change people uh wouldn't recommend it zero out of ten yeah do not recommend and the union you know uh, you know the captain and the admiral are like well you know what that's kind of our thing we, we we're explorers we want to go see and the krill are just like all right it's on you ain't gonna stop you ain't gonna help you go ahead we find out that the admiral has a previous relationship with dr finn we actually go on to find out they were at one point married um they've been apart for some time now and it's very clear that the doctor moved on with her life and the admiral misses her the admiral regrets the ending of their marriage and he uh, a couple of times uh, makes some moves that the doctor rescinds and you know they do their best to uh, to make the best of things, but uh, all is not well for the admiral. Uh, while they're in th in this now starless region of space, they find this large uh, construct of some kind. It's almost both technological and uh, organic at the same time. It really gave me some uh, some feelings of like what we saw with Species Eight Four Seven Two in. Uh, in Star Trek Voyager, this sort of like bio biological slash technological uh, merging, and uh, while on board the ship, the Admiral is infected with some with something. We don't really know what it is. Nothing's registering on scanners, and he begins to mutate. And this is where we get back into what I was talking about last time, which is in uh, how much of a big budget boost this show got because the makeup and practical effects they do on the characters in this show as they transform into these um, insectoid like beings as they become this whole other species, basically uh, the makeup and practical effects are stellar. They are, they're gruesome and they're creepy and they just, they look so good. Um, the lighting and, and, and design of this again, it's just everything about this episode continues to show how far they are really pushing this new budget they've got from Hulu. It's a very uh, intense, uh, high stress, high anxiety episode of the Orville. Uh, it's it's very reminiscent of, I, I think this particular chunk in, in particular really reminded me of things like Star Trek Enterprise in season three, when they go to the Delphic Expanse. Uh, this, you know, this, this creepy, dangerous region of space where nothing really makes sense. Um, again, there's elements of, things from original the original series and and the next generation involving the relationship with the klingons um a lot of a uh, lot of moments of and the, even a little bit of john carpenter's the thing in this kind of because you're not entirely sure what's around uh, every corner or who's who um all in all very great suspenseful episode 
a um, lot of fun, uh, high high tension moments, um, some great scares, some great action. Uh, so again, amazing CGI and special effects. And again, there's a few moments of levity and humor in this episode, but they never feel out of place. They never feel tactless or tasteless. Um, and they're genuinely funny. I mean, they are again, like when the show does humor, it does humor really well. It's believable humor coming from these characters that we know and love. Gordon has some great moments of laughter uh, captain Mercer has a great, a great moment uh, partway through uh, where he makes a reference to another sci-fi property. It's kind of fantastic, all things considered. So uh, a fantastic episode. And again, also continuing with the idea of letting these uh, episodes breathe. This one's a, right a little over an hour long as well. Um, and just taking, they're just taking their time and telling the story in as much time as they feel is necessary rather than trying to, you know, bullet point this shit to to meet a certain uh duration requirement that would fall on network television so again just continuing to show um how seth mcfarlane and his team and all the actors and all the crew and none of them like the the three years away were not wasted you know you worry that okay coming back to a show after all this time is the is the uh is the the inertia still there is the is is the do we lose some of that uh do we lose some of that momentum and no it it built up over all that time and it's it's very clear to me that they are they are this is not a hail mary of a final season sometimes you get one of these like final revival seasons and it feels like a hail mary to do it again i think seth mcfarland is trying to show that this show can continue on that this does not need to be the last season that they can keep it going strong if they just let him make the show he wants to make and do what he wants to do and hulu seems to be willing to give him that control and if that's the case and this show continues to be this good i want four five six i want as many seasons as mcfarlane wants to give me because this is some good stuff and this is this is giving me far more satisfaction for my star trek itch than anything else star trek is putting out right now so have you seen the new episode of the orville what did you think of it let us know down in the comments below or let us know on twitter all the twitter stuff's down there like and subscribe and all that good stuff and hey we'll be back again next week with more of the orville reviews we've got our the boys review coming this weekend we've got our ms marvel and obi-wan kenobi reviews continuing as well as trailer reactions so many good things happening on this channel so make sure you guys check it all out my name is mike and uh i'll see you guys next time Bye.